Welcome, everyone, and thank you for coming to the 2017 IDLU Assembly of Party and uh, Partnership Forum. Uh, my name is Nawaf al Mahamal. I am a representative of the Kuwait uh, Fund for Economic Development, representing the state of Kuwait as a president of this uh, assembly. I would like to thank uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the International Cooperation of the Republic of Italy, Idlu's host country, for uh, kindly making available uh, this venue for uh, our meeting today. Before we begin, I would like to ask uh, for a minute of silence for the victims in Egypt and for all those who uh, have lost their lives for uh, senseless uh, violence. new feature of uh, the annual uh, meeting introduced since last year is the Partnership Forum, which aims to engage our member parties and partners, uh, other governments, international policy thinkers, and development practitioners in the interactive dialogue on key issues relating to the rule of law. The objective is to strengthen partnership and stimulate new thinking on these critical issues. Last year, the forum considers ITLU new strategic plan and its uh, potential contribution to the achievement of the 2030 uh, development agenda for sustainable development. The forum this year will focus on the peace, development, nexus, and its relation to the rule of law. I would like to conclude my welcome remarks and introduce His Excellency uh, Benedetto uh, de la Vidova, Under Secretary of State, who will deliver the opening address on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the International Cooperation of uh, Italy. Excellency, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President, Madam Director General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is for me a great pleasure to open Idolos Assembly of Parties that Italy traditionally hosts at the Farnesina. We are living in a world of rising inequalities, continued restrictions on human rights, multiple conflicts and large-scale population movements. Rule of law is under severe pressure and the activity of a strong and effective idolo is more than ever useful and needed. The implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development increasingly relies on the existence of effective regulatory and legislative frameworks to help mitigate the undesirable effects of globalization, prevent instability and conflict, and build more equal and inclusive societies. In this context, IDLO's expertise in sustaining the rule of law and promoting justice is precious, especially considering that its mandate is unique among international development bodies and agencies. As the United Nations Secretary General Gutierrez constantly highlights, building more effective and accountable institutions and protecting human rights, including political, economic, social, and cultural rights, means investing in sustaining peace. Human rights, together with peace and development, are indeed the three pillars of, on which the international system and Shreen in the United Nations Charter of the United Nations was built in 1945. In, in uh, 2015, with the adoption of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the international community strongly reaffirmed that the three pillars are intrinsically interlinked and mutually reinforcing. The rule of law is at the heart of the nexus between society and state, 
and the base for creating trust and accountability within a genuine social contract. When countries experience conflict or institutions are weakened in a way that they no longer abide by the rule of law, this social contract fails. The rule of law is therefore a precondition for thriving societies. Countries with a strong rule of law and fair justice systems are more likely to be prosperous, peaceful, just, inclusive, and resilient. The rule of law is also fundamental to uphold human dignity and address inequalities. Because of its relevance across the entire 2030 agenda, it is indeed an essential means for making sure that nobody is left behind. However, the damaging social, political, and economic effects of inequality are not confined to the poor. They jeopardize the social fabric of the world society. There is strong evidence, for example, that, is, that in unequal and unfair societies, economies grow slower and are more fragile. Italy, as a member of the international community and within the European Union framework, is pushing for an increased engagement in supporting the rule of law as a fundamental component of sustainable development. Ensuring the meaningful participation of women and girls in all areas of society and having their rights fully respected is particularly relevant in our context, and I am particularly happy to see that you will devote one of the sessions of the Partnership Forum to strengthen women's access to justice. Ladies and gentlemen, in recent years we have work, uh, worked together to consolidate IDLO's role and we now see its increasing importance as one of the actors of Rome's international organizations hub. We welcome its governance reform aimed at making the organization even more inclusive and the new management plan that will be approved during this assembly. Today we are the delighted to welcome Mali and Sweden as new members to IDLO, as well as Montenegro will, will complete soon its procedure for the ratification of IDLO status. The growth of the IDLO's membership is the best evidence of its growing success. We especially appreciate IDLO's constant strive to translate the rule of law from an abstract principle into concrete actions that can effectively improve people's lives through promoting equality and justice for all. We commend IDLO's efforts to empower people and vulnerable groups, including refugees, migrants and internally displayed, displaced people to understand their rights, to promote judicial independence and integrity, to support civil society actors, to progress policy and lawmaking, and help build effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. To improve the legal framework in order to attract foreign investments. We prize IDLO's commitment to the stabilization of fragile and post-conflict countries and its increased activity in Africa, where its action is strongly needed. However, in order to fully implement and expand its strategic plan, IDLO needs a strong commitment, both financially and politically, from all of us. In 2018, Italy will confirm its substantial financial contribution to the organization. We hope that other members will join us in ensuring their active, active support to IDLO's core mandate and implementation of projects throughout the world. I thank you and wish you a very fruitful debate. Thank you. Thank you for these uh, important and inspiring remarks that provide an excellent opening for our proceeding today. Uh, our first item is the adoption of the agenda. I believe it is uh, 
has been already circulated with the documents uh, according to the regulation two weeks uh, before uh, the meeting. Uh, let's now proceed to the adoption of the agenda. Uh, the provisional agenda has already been circulated to all member parties. If any uh, wish to add any items to the agenda, we would welcome that at this stage. May I take it that all uh, member parties wish to adopt the agenda? Uh, the agenda is uh, adopted. First item on the agenda is the president's statement. <clears throat> Excellencies, friends, uh, this is an important meeting of the Assembly of Party because it marks the end of Kuwait terms as uh, president of the International Development Law Organization. The Kuwait Fund for Economic Development as a representative of the state of Kuwait uh, on development matters has a long history and engagement with, uh, uh, with, with IDLO. And I'm proud uh, that I have been able to personally play that role in seeing the organization grow and go from uh, one strength to another. During my term as president, uh, the international landscape has changed and the international community transitioned from the Millennium Development Goal to the Sustainable uh, Development Goals. As a lawyer who has spent uh, all his career on development issues, the inclusion uh, of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable, for sustainable Development Goal uh, 16, which provide for a peaceful and inclusive society and access to justice for all, as well as effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels is a watershed moment. Uh, SDG 16 explicitly recognize access to justice and the rule of law as a critical component of sustainable development and a cross-cutting target across the agenda. Every project that Kuwait Fund considers for funding has to demonstrate its linkages to the SDGs. As a president, I am proud to have been part of IDLU's new strategic plan that clearly enshrined the principle of Goal 16, that are core components of IDLU work and provide the basis for IDLU strategy of 2020. I am proud of my involvement with an organization that has at its heart the overarching goal to promote the rule of law as a driver to sustainable development. The IDLU I first knew when I became involved with the organization is no more. Instead, I see a strengthened, relevant, innovative organization that makes a difference in people's lives. IDLU now works in 31 countries compared to 40, 14 countries uh, at the end of 2014. The organization has stabilized its program portfolio, decreasing its uh, risk from 81% to 65% of the program portfolio now in fragile states. Over these three years, seven new members party have joined IDLU, namely Honduras, Mongolia, Pakistan, and Vietnam. And today, we welcome Mali and Sweden accession of the IDLU Treaty, while Montenegro is signing and signaling its country interest to join IDLU's membership. At the international level, IDLU is now recognized as a key international actor in rule of law and access to justice with its active presence in the United States and other international era. This external growth has also been matched with significant effort to strengthen the organization, guided toward improving effectiveness, transparency, accountability, and more importantly, impact impact in people's life. While Kuwait may be ending its presidency, our commitment to IDLU remains strong, and I hope I can count on you to do the same. Thank you.
agenda item two is the director general report. We can now move to the next item on the agenda and I would like to give the floor to the director general. <clears throat> Mr. President, excellencies, special guests, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege and pleasure to address the annual meeting of the Idlo Assembly of Parties. A warm welcome to all delegates, especially those who have traveled from distant capitals. And my special thanks to Assistant Secretary General Fabrizio Hochschild for making the journey from New York to Rome to be with us here today and for agreeing to open the Partnership Forum this afternoon. I'm very grateful to Under Secretary of State, Mr. Deda Vedova, for inaugurating the assembly and for his expression of support to IDLO, and to the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation for its long-standing and consistent support to us and for lending us this beautiful Sala Conferenza Internazionale for this meeting. We greatly value Italy's support as our host country, long-standing partner, and ex officio vice president. I extend my congratulations to Mali and Sweden as new members of IDLO and to Montenegro as a signatory on its way to becoming our next member party. I take the membership growth as a recognition of the relevance of IDLO's mandate. At a time when people are demanding clean government, effective institutions, access to justice, and respect for human rights. This week marks the fourth anniversary of the popular uprising in Ukraine, which led to political transition and an ambitious change agenda to build a European future. IDLO has been present in Ukraine since 2015, and I had the privilege to visit Kiev last month to meet the authorities and to see our work there. Here is a short video of what I saw and heard. Of course, there are many challenges, but I hope that you will be as encouraged as I was at what has been achieved in a short period of time with the support of the government and local partners. NABU is the first agency to initiate investigations against current civil servants and high-ranking government officials. This is the tactical task for which NABU was created. And a great achievement as a result of the support received from international agencies is the long-awaited decision to create the Anti-Corruption Court, an objective we have been pursuing for a year and a half. Thanks to the great international support, now it is not a question of if, just a question of time. Before this centre was established, anything could be done behind closed doors. They could demand bribes, or people could obtain fake documents, even though it's illegal. In this open plan office, there are cameras and everything is out in the open, making such behaviour impossible. I'm here for my aunt's resident registration. Previously, we used the passport office and had to return many times before we were successful. At this centre, though, the process only took me 20 minutes. I'm an internally displaced person from Donetsk. Previously, it was extremely difficult to obtain administrative services. We had to wait in long lines, and having a baby with you complicates everything. This center, though, makes me feel like I am in Europe. 
I would recommend anyone to visit the center for any administrative services. So it's a very interesting moment, you know, it's a long-term relationship, we want to stay in this country. And the public institutions need to both function properly and be expected to be functioning. The issue of corruption was one of uh, really pressing issues which brought people to the streets to challenge uh, the less than democratic government in 2013. Uh, the demand for uh, having real action which would remove corrupt practices was very high on the agenda of the civil society and actually of all Ukrainians. Even now if you ask anybody what's the top priority, they would say fighting corruption. Uh, in Ukraine, we are also broadening our work to support deregulation and uh, to uh, strengthen um, the justice system, especially the bailiff uh, system. So uh, I wanted to show that film to you because I feel very encouraged by it, and it helps to bring the work that is being done on the ground into uh, this room. Sometimes it can feel uh, rather remote what rule of law really is. But listening to those people in Kharkiv, I felt that there uh, they were actually living witnesses uh, to the effort to establish uh, rule of law for, benefits of, for the benefit of citizens. Now, turning from Ukraine to the rest of the world, at the root of popular discontent, fragility, and conflict lie problems of injustice, inequality, exclusion, and deprivation. They are invariably related to the failures of governance, to poor laws and weak institutions, to the absence of accountability and respect for the rule of law. In both developed and developing countries, growing numbers of people feel left out and left behind. And in a dangerous and endangered world, the international system of laws and rules, human rights and humanitarian principles are under pressure. Not only has the number of countries affected by fragility and conflict grown significantly in recent years, the nature of violent conflicts has also changed, making peace harder to negotiate or sustain. Population displacement has reached unprecedented levels with over 65 million people. That is 5 million more people than the entire population of Italy now displaced, forced to flee their homes. Strengthening the rule of law cannot wait until violence has subsided or the economy has recovered, but must occur alongside humanitarian response, political action, and economic development as an important measure of stabilization. IDLO is greatly encouraged by recent UN resolutions that acknowledge the importance of the rule of law in preventing conflict and sustaining peace, as well as advancing sustainable development. And this afternoon at the Partnership Forum, we will hear from Assistant Secretary General Hochschild and other distinguished speakers more about these issues. Peace cannot be sustained, nor development made sustainable without investment in the rule of law. That is the theme of the Partnership Forum. It is also the underlying premise of IDLO's strategic plan 2017 and to 2020, which we call Strategy 2020, and which this assembly endorsed a year ago. Noticing the close alignment between our mission and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, you encouraged us to proactively contribute to the implementation of the SDGs to enhance inclusion, equality, access to justice, and the rule of law. 12 months later, I'm pleased to report that our program implementation is largely on track and we have a healthy pipeline. Independent program evaluations have confirmed good results and we are keen to learn, adapt, and enhance our performance. Our advocacy and visibility continue to grow and we have forged some significant strategic partnerships. The increased membership is just one manifestation of that. 
and important organizational and governance reforms have been completed as promised at the last assembly, although some measures have had to be deferred to 2018 because of lack of funds. In assessing our achievements, it is important to recall that we have been working in 2017 with a tight budget and under tough austerity measures. But thanks to careful monitoring and prioritization, we expect to end the year within budget. IDLO is stable and we are optimistic about the future. The credit for keeping that ship steady and on course goes to my colleagues in the field, other offices and headquarters. Their dedication, dynamism, courage and creativity have been truly impressive. IDLO's key challenge remains resource mobilization. How to improve the predictability of funding, expand the volume of unrestricted funds and broaden our donor base. My report will focus on three main issues, results, reforms and resources. First on results, our strategy 2020 sets out two impact goals, empowering people to access justice and rights and building effective accountable institutions. Together, they represent our top-down, bottom-up approach, working with state institutions and civil society organizations in a non-prescriptive way that is sensitive to local context and committed to fostering local ownership. The two impact goals, as you may recall, are underpinned by six action goals or thematic areas, which you can see on this slide. I hope you can read it. It's a bit difficult, but we do have uh, uh, copies of the strategy map available. Together, they represent the total of IDLO's programs, research, and advocacy in 2017. I should add that the geographic diversity of our operations has expanded, with new programs opening up this year in Mexico and Uganda. And this trend will continue next year, when the size of our Asia portfolio, dominated by our work in Afghanistan, will be overtaken by our programs in Africa for the first time in IDLO's history. The regional diversification is a positive development as it enhances our operational stability and reinforces our strategic alliance. Our first goal, legal empowerment, through rights awareness, legal literacy, legal aid, and other legal services, helps to combat discrimination and reduce marginalization. As such, it is key to achieving the aspirations of the 2030 agenda to leave no one behind. We are committed under this goal to expand our work for women and girls and to work with civil society to promote the rule of law. A world that is safe and fair for women is a better world for all. As IDLO's first female director general, I take great pride in what we have achieved in the space of the last four years or so. We developed and rolled out IDLO's first ever gender strategy and managed to incorporate gender equality as a principal objective or a significant component in at least 21 of our 62 projects. And over the past year, we have expanded our work for women and girls and are now in the process of consulting on a new gender strategy. In April this year, I signed a memorandum of understanding with the executive director of UN Women to partner on the implementation of SDG 5. Our gender programs in 2017 covered three key areas. First, promoting gender responsive laws and policies. We support and supported the implementation of the gender provisions of the constitution in Kenya. And we are cooperating with the Ministry of Women, Family and Childhood Affairs in Tunisia to support their work on the, on putting together a legislative agenda in consultation with civil society. The minister will join us tomorrow morning to speak about her government's priorities. The second area of our work is combating gender-based violence. Our largest program is in Afghanistan, where we are pursuing a multi-pronged strategy, strengthening the prosecution capacity of the Attorney General's office, facilitating women's shelter networks, and developing a legal aid network to respond to the needs of victims of violence. And we are very pleased that following an independent evaluation, 
The program has been renewed until 2020 with support from the United States. We are also working to combat gender-based violence in Honduras, Liberia, Mongolia, and Ukraine. Our third key area is empowering women and girls to claim their economic and social rights. Using innovative methodology, we are strengthening the capacity of young women and adolescent girls and their communities to hold service providers accountable for HIV-related services in Uganda and Tanzania. With support from the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, we are investigating the barriers faced by women entrepreneurs in some Arab countries. And in Burundi, we are piloting a project to ensure recognition of women's informal rights to land. Justice for women improves when justice is dispensed by women. And that is why, that has been our experience, and that is why in 2017 we actively championed the participation of women in the justice sector and supported regional and international networks of women judges and lawyers. I'm very pleased that Judge Najib Ben Saleh is here from the Ministry of Justice of Tunisia, with whom we are partnering on this issue. In line with our 2017 management plan, our collaboration with civil society is also growing. As an intergovernmental organization that works directly on the ground, we are uniquely positioned to work with both civil society as well as institutions to improve justice and strengthen trust and confidence between the two. And we used the competency effectively in 2017 for instance, in Honduras, where IDLO is working with the municipality of San Pedro Sula to develop, and civil society groups, to develop policies and mechanisms to reduce homicide and family violence. Also in Uganda, where with support from Sweden, we are carrying out multi-stakeholder consultations to link community justice sectors with the formal justice system. And in Myanmar, where we are partnering with UNDP and have invested our own funds to help communities and justice officials to jointly address local issues and build trust and confidence. An independent evaluation commissioned by UNDP has recommended the expansion of the program to other parts of the country, including the Rakhine State. Let me now turn to the second impact goal on institution building. In 2017, about 60% of IDLO's programs were devoted to institution building, most of it in transitional, fragile, or conflict-affected situations. And let me highlight some examples of our work on institution building to show you the range and complexity of the challenges that we, the international community, and the national actors face. In Afghanistan, the challenges of transition and the sustainability of transition. We have been present in Afghanistan since 2002, and for the past four years, we implemented the Justice Training and Transition Program to strengthen the capacity of four key institutions in the criminal justice sector so that they can take responsibility for their own professional development. You can see the impressive figures, statistics on the slide. And while the Afghan partner institutions are now carrying out the legal training themselves, our role this past year has been to support the transition and reinforce its sustainability. The ultimate aim is to improve the quality of justice in Afghanistan. But the transition has not been only about building technical capabilities. It has also been about navigating the political and cultural realities to embed the changes in line with the nationally owned vision. In Somalia, we are operating in a volatile security environment. We are working on a multi-year, multi-institutional program, strengthening the Ministry of Justice and the Office of the Attorney General, working to modernize traditional dispute resolution mechanism, engaging with community-based reconciliation and social healing to rehabilitate low-risk former combatants, and developing policies to address migration and displacement. While this is an important contribution 
to stabilization and state building, we are working in an extremely challenging security and political environment. And I'm pleased to welcome the Attorney General of Somalia to this assembly, and we look forward to hearing from him uh, about the situation there. Successful institution building must be participatory and locally owned. But it is much more difficult than that to translate that in practice. IDLO is working in Northern Mali on a five-year project supported by the Netherlands to strengthen the criminal justice chain and end impunity for crimes, which has been one of the main causes of instability. Using an innovative methodology and working with the UN mission, we are supporting consultations that bring together institutional actors, police, prisons, court officials, as well as grassroots and community leaders to jointly identify problems, devise solutions, assess their effectiveness, and adjust them accordingly. It is a challenging, iterative process, seeking to build true local ownership and confidence building in a fragile environment. Our Dutch counterpart in Mali complimented Idlo as, and I quote him, an important player that does not walk away from difficult situations. Responding flexibly and rapidly to national needs is another uh, challenge, but also an opportunity. And in Kenya, Idlo has been providing technical assistance since 2009 to support the implementation of the new constitution. We are working with all three branches of the government, the executive, judiciary, and legislature, through a number of projects to contribute to legislative and regulatory reforms, transformative, to bring transformative changes to the judiciary, and to support the devolution process and measures to advance gender equality. Our support to Kenyan, Kenyan institutions is demand-driven, collaborative, and non-partisan. An independent evaluation of our Kenya programs this year acknowledged that our comparative advantage has been the ability to adapt, respond flexibly, and mobilize high-quality legal expertise rapidly to the requests that we have received from our institutional partners. Now, let me quickly highlight two important developments in our programming. First is our growing engagement with informal or customary forms of justice, both in terms of programs in Somalia, Burundi, Uganda, and elsewhere, and through research and learning. The second is our expanding work to support economic development in three ways. First, we signed a framework agreement with the European Bank for Reconstruction in Development in July under which we are now cooperating in countries in Europe, Central Asia, and Mediterranean region to strengthen capacity on commercial law, alternate dispute resolution, and enforcement of justice, judgments. And I am pleased to welcome Ms. Birkin, the General Counsel of EBRD, uh, who will also be addressing our partnership forum this afternoon. The second way in which we are expanding our work on economic development is on a project developed by the UN Office of the High Representative on these developed countries, landlocked and small island states with support from Italy. And this is an innovative investment support program for the least developed countries. What's innovative about it? It is a public-private partnership under which we are seeking no fee or low fee support from law firms and legal experts to respond to requests from the least developed countries. It is very much a demand-driven project to be led by the countries themselves. And we are grateful to the European Union for pledging its financial support for this program. The third way in which we are expanding our work in economic development is with co in cooperation with the Ministry of Commerce of China. Uh, we signed a memorandum of understanding with MOFCOM, and we are now in the process of developing a legal support program as part of the One Belt, One Road initiative. Let me now turn to management reforms. Under the strategic plan, we are committed to pursuing eight management, major initiatives on management to enhance IDLO's effectiveness 
efficiency, transparency, and political and financial support. Because of reduced unrestricted funds this year, we have had to make some hard choices, but have nevertheless made good progress. Our most significant management achievement this year was the adoption of a new employment model and new employee rules, following extensive consultations with employees in all our offices. For the first time in IDLO's history, all IDLO employees, no matter where they are, whether at headquarters or in the field, will be subject to the same policies and rules. The new model establishes a, modern, a more modern, streamlined system for attracting, recruiting, and retaining employees in line with our mandate goals, operational needs, and resources. And the rules will be implemented in a phased manner in 2018, subject to the availability of funds. The second important achievement has been on financial transparency and accountability. We have produced our first full and detailed output-based budget for 2018, and furthermore, we are designing a new results framework that will be rolled out in 2018. And these measures will help us to report to you and other stakeholders more comprehensively and accurately, and allow ourselves to better monitor our progress and learn from our performance. Thirdly, I'm pleased to report that we have implemented most of the recommendations of the independent management review conducted in 2016 and the continuous improvement program launched in 2015. However, because of funding constraints, we've had to defer work related to the enterprise resource platform and that work is only just beginning and will be carried into 2018. In our strategic plan, and repeated in our 2017 management plan, is our commitment to strengthen IDLO's field orientation. Our new employee rules, the rollout of the field operations manual earlier this year, better risk management, and improved field security support indicate some important progress in that direction. But I am conscious that there is much more to do, for instance, on delegation and accountability, and we plan to carry out that work in 2018. Let me now turn to resources. I begin by thanking our financial partners for their generous and continued support, especially Italy, Sweden, and the United States. While we expect to end the year with a balanced budget, we have very little financial flexibility. Our program conti revenue continues to diversify across countries, but without a commensurate level of core funding, we will not be able to invest in innovation, learning, and other much needed reform initiatives. Furthermore, and I underline this point, IDLO's narrow donor base is a major vulnerability. Mindful of the need to revitalize our resource mobilization during the past year, we have strengthened our internal capacity, developed a new resource mobilization plan with input from the standing committee, and are int intensifying our engagement with current, new, and prospective partners, including on the sidelines of this assembly. Resource mobilization will remain a major priority next year. And my colleagues and I intend to pursue new partnerships with fervor. As we do that, we will knock on your doors for your support. Although there is no financial obligation attached to membership of IDLO, we hope you will all give positive consideration to regular voluntary contributions. Finally, let me reiterate our commitment to support our member parties. And in this context, we welcome the initiative that the member parties have taken on governance reform and look forward to working with you to roll them out. Finally, Mr. President, I cannot end my remarks without paying special tribute to you as you complete your term. We have gone through some good times and a few rough moments in the past three years, and through it all, I have appreciated your support, friendship, and counsel. Next year will be IDLO's 30th anniversary. From a small Rome-based training institution set up to level the playing field of legal knowledge to a medium-sized development organization 
with 20 officers on four continents engaged in peace building, justice, and sustainable development has been a long and eventful journey for IDLO. In a troubled and turbulent world, IDLO's mission to create a culture of justice remains as relevant as the day it was born and our commitment to further that mandate as determined as ever. Thank you. Thank you, Director General, for your comprehensive review. In order to allow for our new member uh, party to join actively in the debate, I would uh, like to uh, uh, invite delegations uh, that have uh, comments or questions regarding the uh, DG report uh, to hold them uh, during uh, the general uh, debate, after, which will take place immediately after the signing uh, ceremony. I would like uh, to extend a warm welcome to the Kingdom of Sweden, the Republic of Mali, and Montenegro, which will sign today IDLU's establishment agreement. Sweden and Mali are also depositing their instrument of accession, and as a result, will join this assembly as members. Montenegro will complete shortly its domestic procedure after the ratification. I would like to invite their representative to participate in the signing ceremony pursuant to Article 13 of the Establishment Agreement. The accession of a party to the Establishment Agreement requires approval of a simple majority of the Assembly. And uh, this requirement has already been completed satisfactorily through a written process prior to this Assembly.
Welcome to our new member parties, Sweden and Mali. I look forward to Montenegro soon completing its domestic procedure. I would like to ask if the delegations would like to say a few words. Will, uh, uh, okay. I would like uh, to call on the representative of Mali. Yes. Monsieur le Président, Madame la Directrice, Excellences, Monsieur les Ambassadeurs, Distingués invités, ce jour est pour nous et pour notre pays, le Mali, un grand jour qui voit le couronnement de nombreuses années d'efforts et de persévérance pour aboutir aujourd'hui à une adhésion effective et formelle de la République du Mali à Idlo. Je voudrais, tout en nous en félicitant, adresser toute ma gratitude à tous les artisans de ce processus, à tous ceux qui, autour de Madame la Directrice, ont œuvré ici et au Mali pour qu'aujourd'hui soit. Mes reconnaissances et toute ma gratitude vont aussi à Idlo pour tout ce que Idlo a entrepris au Mali, n'attendant pas cette adhésion formelle pour agir dans un pays comme le nôtre, qui est dans une passe difficile. Vous en êtes tous informés, plus qu'informés même, où le pays, depuis quelques années, est en quête de paix effective de sécurité nécessaire au développement, y compris au développement du droit. Merci pour tout ce qui a été fait dans la région du centre et dans la région du nord, notamment à travers le, profet, le projet pilote d'accès à la justice dans la région de Mopti. Et à travers ma modeste personne, soyez assurés de la reconnaissance éternelle du peuple du Mali. Je vous remercie. Thank you and you're most welcome. I would like to call on the representative of Sweden now. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Your Excellencies, Director General uh, Irene Khan, delegates and distinguished guests. On behalf of the government of Sweden, I wish to express what an honor it is to attend this assembly of parties today, not only as a donor state, but also as a full member of IDLO. The prominent work of IDLO is enabling governments to gather and strengthen their work with the furthering and promotion of the rule of law is of great importance, not only for the safeguarding and promotion of human rights, for all, but also for the implementation of the Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. The theme for this year's partnership forum that explores the nexus between peace and development in conjunction with the rule of law comes as a great point in time. Democratic systems are increasingly being weakened by modern democratic backsliding showcasing elected despots consolidating power through the use and abuse of law. On a positive note, we can see that there has been a development on many fronts of democracy and rule of law. However, however human rights are increasingly questioned and challenged. These three elements human rights, democracy, and the rule of law are mutually 
dependent and reinforce each other. Without these three cannot be sustainable development in society. Around the world, gender equality has improved. However, countless numbers of women and girls are still experience of blatant lack of rights, representation and resources. To end this discrimination, Sweden is proud to be the first country in the world to pursue a feminist foreign policy. In 2015, the Swedish government put forward an action plan for a feminist foreign policy to ensure that our foreign service ensures the full enjoyment of human rights by all women and girls. This includes increasing women's political representation and empowerment, not least legal empowerment. As an example, Swedish Foreign Minister Margot Wallström's personal engagement in promoting gender parity in international justice is visible and clear through her participation in the Global GQUAL campaign. At the roots of our foreign policy must be gender equality in order for democracy and the rule of law to grow and flourish. As the action plan states, gender equality is a goal in itself but it is also essential for the achievement of the government's other overall objectives, such as peace, security and sustainable development. To achieve sustainable peace and development, the entire population, both men and women, must be involved in all stages of conflict resolution and also in humanitarian work. We need to acknowledge the importance of promoting gender equality in order to strategically address issues of human security, sustainable development and human rights. So our feminist foreign policy takes us one step further. Throughout our foreign policy, including in peace and security efforts, we will apply a systematic gender perspective. For sustainable development, peace and security cannot be achieved if half the population is included or excluded. In so doing, we can contribute to real progress. Gender equality is a fundamental matter of human rights, democracy and social justice. Overwhelming evidence shows that it is also a precondition for sustainable growth, welfare, peace and security. Societies where women are not thriving will not prosper. Um, the Swedish government intends to draw attention to and work for the rule of law as fundamental to democracy, human rights and gender equality. And this work is closely linked to the global goals of the Agenda 2030, in particular Development Goal 16 on peace, justice and strong institutions. The rule of law is crucial to prevent and combat corruption. However, corruption has the tendency to encroach on and undermine the rule of law. This has serious consequences for democracy when positions of power become a method to acquire resources, so resulting in difficulties for the realization of political intentions. To combat corruption, we must work together with the building of norms, institutions and methods to strengthen the rule of law. Today, governance has become global and networks are more important than ever. If we want to remain relevant and effective in our support of democracy and the rule of law, engagement in and close work within partnerships and networks is a necessity. IDLO fills an important function as a meeting point and enabler for governments to continue promoting and strengthening the rule of law. And we look very much forward to contributing to and continuing this work. So on behalf of Sweden, allow me once again to express our happiness to become a full IDLO member. We look forward to future cooperation with IDLO and to strengthening and the promotion of human rights, democracy and the rule of law for all. Thank you.
thank you for Sweden, and I would like to call the representative of Montenegro. Thank you very much, dear President, dear Madam Director General, ladies and gentlemen, I am really honored to have been designated to sign on behalf of my government, the government of Montenegro, the agreement for the establishment of the International Development Law Organization. Montenegro has benefited from IDLO's expertise for several years now and it was one of the key partner organizations in our past that presented efforts to advance our overall national legislative and judicial framework. For a country which has made significant progress on its path towards the membership of the European Union, the core mission of IDLO was all along complementary. The rule of law is at the center of our European integration process as the first and foremost prerequisite for sustainable development and the overall progress of our country. In achieving demanding goals in this area, Montenegro has been able to count on strong and invaluable, invaluable support of our international partners, the European Commission, Council, Council of Europe, both EU and non-EU countries, amongst other Italy, Netherlands, the United Kingdom, Norway, Germany, and the United States. We are hopeful that the established cooperation and a solid track record will not only benefit our national objectives in this regard, but will also contribute to promoting of the fundamental importance of the rule of law justice and independent judiciary far beyond our borders. After years of reforms, we believe that we are at the point where we should not only be successful at implementing the best practices and expertise of others, but also share our own experience and insights in, advance, in advancing the rule of law. We believe that in IDLO, we have a perfect partner to evolve this aspiration of ours. With this in mind, we are hopeful that the forthcoming Regional Forum on Judicial Cooperation in Criminal Matters, which our government is organizing in Montenegro together with IDLO, will prove to be a success. Thank you once again, of course, for your attention, for your support, and for, for this event that we are attending today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative of Montenegro. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the general debate. Uh, please indicate to the Secretariat uh, if you would like to be added to the list of speakers and please uh, introduce your delegation as you speak. Uh, we have uh, the list so far. We start with uh, Italy. The floor is yours. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everybody. Dear Mr. President, dear Irene, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure for me to attend for the third time the uh, Assembly of Parties of IDLO, and uh, it's going to be a pleasure to share with you some comments. But before that, allow me to thank, to warmly thank our President for his dedication to IDLO and for steering so wisely over the last years our work, our hard work in the Standing Committee. This assembly uh, is especially important uh, for uh, IDLO and uh, for us all uh, for three main reasons. In the first place, we have just celebrated the enlargement of our IDLO's family with three new members, so meaningfully representative of three different geographical areas. This clearly demonstrates that the wide scope of IDLO's mandate has a growing convening power. Furthermore, today we will endorse the new IDLO governance documents. And uh, we reserve our comments for the following discussion on this specific point. But I would like to stress how important that this reform is going to be in order to enhance IDLO's role in achieving SDG 16. 
the remarkable results achieved in this first year implementation of the Strategy 2020 are our third reason to celebrate. IDLO's programs have continued to grow in number and variety and with a larger geographical extension. IDLO's broad angle in addressing rule of law based on its solid knowledge and background is an essential element of its success. IDLO has a great team both at the headquarters and in the field and we are proud to work together with it. In 2017, the organization has consolidated its activities and at the same time has engaged in new projects. I would like to make a specific reference here to the one in Mexico for the capacity development of police institutions and to the investment support program, ISP, since we like acronyms. The latter has been supported by Italy since its very beginning and it will be implemented with the UN also with the support of the European Union. We also appreciate the new partnerships with the European Bank for the Construction of Development, EBRD, and with the UN Women that will further foster the diversification of activities. We also encourage the organization to pursue an ever-increasing cooperation with the Rome Hub of the United Nations, FAO, IFA, WFP, and also with the United Nations Committee on World Food Security, CFS. The Rome Hub of the United Nations is indeed a natural partner for IDLO in its pursuit of sound and accountable legal frameworks for development. Moreover, I would like to stress the importance of the work that IDLO has undertaken to improve its methodology of designing and assessing programs. We value in particular the results framework that was mentioned by the Director General and which is under preparation. Uh, uh, it will structure in a growingly effective manner the programmatic activity of the, of the organization in order for it to best achieve its strategic objectives and at the same time to be ever more accountable for them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Italy. Uh, now the floor is for Egypt, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Madam Director General Irene Khan, Excellencies, members of the Board of Advisors, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I'd like to thank you for your solidarity with Egypt this morning in its fight against terrorism, a topic which I will address later. I also join Italy in thanking you, Mr. President, for your leadership of this organization during the last years. Agenda 2030 puts forward a clear plan to foster peaceful, just, and inclusive societies which are free from fear and violence. A core principle of the agenda is that there can be no sustainable development without peace and no peace without sustainable development. In this context, the role of the International Development Law Organization, IDLO, is prominent in supporting national efforts to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. We commend IDLO for its efforts to support this goal. Nevertheless, we reaffirm that any programs should be in response to the needs and priorities of member states and without interference in the internal affairs of members. Distinguished delegates, the Assembly of Parties of the International Development Law Organization convenes this year at a very critical point. More than ever before, terrorism is targeting not only innocent people, but is targeting our values, religions, culture, indeed is targeting our humanity. The bloody massacre in a mosque in northern Sinai killing more than 300 innocent people while praying, including children and women, should be a true wake-up call in reinvigorating in the efforts to counter terrorism at all levels, including the funding, supply of weapons, and ide ideological underpinnings of radical extremist thought. Indeed, Egypt is committed to uprooting this plague, to, 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 pre to prevent further terrorism, and to ensure safety and security of its people and in the region. This attack follows a wave of indiscriminate terrorism that targets civilians across the world, making terrorism the biggest threat to international peace and security 
and that countering this threat requires collective efforts on national, regional, and international levels on the basis of the respect for the rule of law and the Charter of the United Nations. IDLO is the only intergovernmental organization devoted to promoting the rule of law, is in a position to contribute effectively to the international efforts to counter this dangerous phenomena of terrorism and its implications. As a non-permanent member of the Security Council, Egypt has introduced a couple of re resolutions that deal with this. Indeed, important questions related to the rule of law need to be asked. Where is the funding related to this terrorism come from? And where is the weapons? And where is the rule of law relating to boundaries and protection, including uh, the venom that is spread through uh, the media? In the meantime, the world is also witnessing an increasing number of conflicts and four eminent famines which resulted in a massive migration from conflict areas to Europe that is considered to be the largest migration challenge since World War II. This also requires idle particular attention and contribution. Distinguished delegates, there is a synergetic relationship between sustainable development and the realization of peace and security. Both are interlinked. We cannot achieve sustainable development if our world continues to suffer from the threats of terrorism, conflicts, and hunger. Egypt, through its membership, as I mentioned, in the Security Council, has always advocated for dealing with root causes of conflicts, not the symptoms, but root causes of conflicts, to pave the way for achieving sustainable development at the national and international levels. We encourage Ireland to play a key role in supporting economic growth and development by responding to national needs to improve the legislative and legal investment frameworks in the context of supporting the realization of Agenda 2030. We recognize the role IDLO has played in the negotiations to formulate Agenda 2030 and its role in supporting the achievement of these goals, and especially Goal 16 on the promotion of peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development. Rule of law is at the center of Agenda 2030. It is inconceivable to envision that these universal objectives could be achieved without a collective effort to uphold the rule of law in every single sector. In this regard, I would like to reconfirm Egypt's commitment to support all international efforts that could contribute to the achievement of these objectives. Egypt believes that these goals should result in a balanced and fair development that benefits everybody with special attention to women and children. This requires meaningful participation of all segments of the society. The right of development is the cornerstone of the Egyptian Sustainable Development Strategy 2030, which aims at achieving comprehensive sustainable economic development, improving the investment context, enhancing human capital, and accomplishing social justice together with providing decent life for all Egyptian citizens. In this regard, we believe the national efforts to achieve these goals should be supported by the international community, which could continue to deal effectively with other challenges that hamper achieving sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, we note the IDLO management plan and the efforts being made to put the organization into a sustainable growth trajectory, especially in an increasing challenging international environment. We call on the organization to focus its efforts in the next years in enhancing its impact in line with the national priorities. This will require successful organizational reform while reducing the organizational risks. One important challenge at this stage is to revitalize the resource mobilization of the organization, including by expanding and diversifying the fund base, the funding base. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all donors, and in particular the host country, Italy, for their continuous general support to the organization. We stress the importance of a more meaningful participation of developing countries in the governance of the organization. We also highlight the importance of giving more priority to the challenges facing developing countries, such as the rule of law, social inclusion, economic empowerment, as well as the dealing with the challenges dealing from migration. Finally, Mr. President, I conclude by I'd like to welcome the new members, Sweden and Mali, and Montenegro for their, as a signatory, and to reconfirm our determination to work together to achieve the collective objectives of the organization. Thank you very much. Thank you. The turn now is to the Vice President, the USA. Mr. President, Madam Director General, fellow delegates, observers, and colleagues, good morning. Madam Director General, 
The United States thanks you and the entire IDLO team in Rome and in the field for your impressive efforts over the last year to deliver significant results through your project work and to further solidify the rule of law as an integral element of sustainable development. The United States is a strong supporter of IDLO and we work with your organization in more than 20 countries. We also commend the contributions of outgoing standing committee president Nawaf al Mahamal and his steady guidance during challenging times. We welcome new members, Sweden and Mali, and we look forward to Montenegro's full accession. Colleagues, one of ITLO's strengths is its ability to work in complicated environments, to implement high quality critical projects, to promote access to justice, and to strengthen judicial institutions. Thanks to robust management, budget, and governance reform efforts over this past year, the United States sees the IDLO of 2018 as an even stronger partner than in 2017. Madam Director General, the United States appreciates the significant progress you and your team have made in implementing the Continuous Improvement Plan and the updates you have regularly provided to the Standing Committee and to the Audit and Finance Committees this year. We are now one year into Strategy 2020, and we already see results. Expanded membership, geographic diversification of programs, a robust resource management, uh, resource mobilization initiative to broaden the donor base, and a renewed commitment to the organization's health and talent management. We urge you to continue your process of reviewing and updating your management processes, policies, and documents to build on this impressive progress. We look forward to working closely with you and with member states in the coming year. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, USA. We call now the representative of Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, I would like to join, uh, to join previous speakers uh, and to, to thank you for your uh, valuable contribution in the work of this organization. Uh, let me also highly appreciate uh, the work done by the Director General and uh, the whole staff of this organization, especially in my country. And a uh, special thank uh, to you, uh, Director General, for refreshing our memories of what has been done by my country in a th very short period. Uh, of course, I would like to say that uh, the situation uh, which we are living now, it's a unique one for Ukrainian nation uh, because uh, we have to fight a two-front war at the same time. The first on the front of countering external military aggression, restoration of sovereignty and territorial integrity. And the second front is implementing difficult and complex reforms in my country. The scope of reforms currently undertaken in Ukraine is quite broad. It ranges from unprecedented financial and banking reform, when we totally cleared the banking sector, up to decentralization reform, allocating more power and financial resources to local communities. The progress reached is a joint result of Ukraine and its international partners, including ideal all. Here I cannot but mention uh, the anti-corruption measures undertaken by Ukraine. We have established unprecedented anti-corruption mechanisms which already bear fruits. I mean the National Anti-Corruption Bureau, Specialized Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office and the National Agency for Prevention of Corruption. This system already brings positive results more often, we hear about loud criminal cases. However, the fight against corruption is not about criminal alone, criminal prosecution alone. More important is the establishment of an effective system to prevent the disease which eroded Ukraine for years since independence. The launch of the electronic declaration of public servants' income, expenses, and financial obligations became one of effective tools in the fight against corruption in Ukraine. It is perhaps one of the most ambitious initiatives of the government in the world from the standpoint of transparency 
and accountability before society and voters. The next strategic priority is the further build up of judiciary and renewal of social trust in the judiciary. Less than three years, Ukraine adopted the new laws on judicial system and status of judges, on high council of judges, of justice, on constitutional court. It was a tectonic shift that permitted to fill judiciary system with new substance and provide opportunity to build up a truly independent judicial branch of power based on the European and international standards. The complete reshuffle of judiciary system is underway. It started with a relaunch of the Supreme Court upon the initiative of the President of Ukraine. Today, this highest judiciary institution in Ukraine is being set up from scratch via open competition with active participation of civil society. Among the winners of the competition to the post of judges of the new Supreme Court are lawyers, legal scholars, human rights advocates who have never worked as judges before, as well as best judges from all over Ukraine. They have passed strict and thorough selection, including professional and physiological tests, as well as checks by National Anti-Corruption Bureau and National Agency for Prevention of Corruption. At the same time, there is a need for all democratic political forces in my country and civil society to get united and work together with the engagement of international experts, and I hope those from IDLO too, in order to prepare professionally a new consolidated draft laws to ensure fair legal proceedings within the framework of the unified and renewed system of justice. We count on further support of this organization as regards the strengthening of civil society in Ukraine based upon the implementation of the democratic standards, support of cultural diversity, and build up of social institutions. Thank you. Thank you, Ukraine. Uh, please allow me, uh, since we have a, a long item on the agenda, uh, the next item, which is the governance reform, uh, that require a sober uh, majority. So we will pause uh, the current item on the agenda, which is the general debate, to move to uh, the governance reform item, which is item four on the agenda, because it requires voting and a special majority. Then we'll have the break, then we will continue the general debate item. The governance reform, which is item four in the agenda, the purpose of the governance reform was initiated by the Standing Committee uh, at its meeting in July 2016, supported by the Assembly of Party at its last meeting in November 2016. Earlier this year, the Standing Committee, with the support of the Board of Advisors, established an open-ended working group on governance reform, chaired by the USA for the purpose of considering governance reform ideas and options to move the process ahead. During the first half of 2017, the open-ended working group met five times and saw wide participation from representatives of member parties as well as the Board of Advisors. All member parties were sent regular updates on the progress of the working group as well as the markup of the EDLU governance documents, showing the proposed amendment prepared by EDLU's General Counsel. On October 3rd, 2017, as required by IDLU Establishment Agreement, the Secretariat circulated the proposed amendment eight weeks ahead of that meeting of the Assembly of Party. These amendments are being presented uh, for member party consideration and adoption consistent with Article 10 of the Agreement for the Establishment of IDLU. The proposed amendments received extensive consideration by the Standing Committee, Board of Advisors, open-ended working group and member parties over the course of the past year. This is one of the most important matters the Assembly has dealt with, so allow me to summarize some of the key amendments. 
The amendment seeks to clarify and better distinguish the, represent, uh, the respective roles and areas of responsibility of the different governance body, in particular the Standing Committee and the Board of Advisors. The amendments clearly clarify the roles of the Standing Committee focusing on its functions to provide appropriate oversight of the organization between sessions of the Assembly, its responsibility for providing its views and guidance to the Director General on behalf of the party, and its role in reviewing and monitoring the proper implementation of the organization budget, plan, and other decisions of the Assembly. As I mentioned earlier, EDLU membership has grown. On the significant amendment, one of the significant amendments provides for an exp expa expansion of its membership of the committee by, ad by adding two ad hoc members seats uh, for member parties and highlight the aim of having a regionally diverse standing committee that is representative of the organization membership. <laughs> the amendment seeks to focus on the board role and expertise on serving as a resource of a substantive expert advice on the organization and its strategic directions in light of broader international trends relating to rule of law and development. One important point to note is that the governance document have been reviewed to ensure that the language is gender sensitive and they should be interpreted in this way in other languages beyond English too. With this summary over, I would like to open the floor for questions or comment. Please indicate to the Secretariat if you would like uh, to be added to have the floor and please introduce your delegation at you, uh, as you speak. Uh, the first we have on the list is uh, Ecuador, so the, the floor is yours. <laughs> Buenos días a todos, buenos días señor presidente. A nombre de la delegación del Ecuador, desearía en primer lugar felicitar a los nuevos miembros del ITLO, a las delegaciones de Mali, Suecia y Montenegro. Respecto a este punto, señor presidente, desearía señalar que el Ecuador es consciente del crecimiento y mira con entusiasmo los avances, los avances del ITLO en los últimos años, pues entiende que a fin de contar con una organización más ágil, eficiente y acorde a la situación actual, se requieren cambios en su gobernanza. A ese fin, en esta misma sala hace un año, acogimos con satisfacción el proceso iniciado en el 2016 por el Comité Permanente dirigido a revisar las funciones, responsabilidades y facultades de los órganos de gobierno de la ITLO así como a proponer medidas para aumentar, mejorar la transparencia y la rendición de cuentas de los mecanismos de gobernanza. Igualmente, aumentar la participación de las, de las partes miembros y el interés de otras en hacerse miembros, así como fomentar la eficiencia y eficacia generales de la organización. Sin embargo, quisiera mencionar que el gobierno del Ecuador debe manifestar su preocupación, desea manifestar su preocupación en cuanto a la propuesta de procedimiento, del procedimiento del silencio para la toma de decisiones o resoluciones durante el periodo intersesional de esta Asamblea. Si bien este procedimiento podría acelerar los procesos de la organización, al mismo tiempo se le resta capacidades y atribuciones a esta Asamblea, que por excelencia es del órgano máximo de gobierno de la ITLO. Señor presidente, señores delegados, quisiera señalar que el Ecuador no se opone de manera alguna al proceso mismo de la reforma de la gobernanza de la ITLO, pero expresa su inquietud sobre procedimientos de esta naturaleza e invita a las partes a considerar la posibilidad de que la organización y la secretaría utilice este método de aprobación de decisiones o resoluciones en casos de urgencia y de manera excepcional, conforme sucede en otras organizaciones internacionales. Con estas observaciones, señor presidente, el Ecuador 
se suma a la decisión que se tome respecto a esta resolución. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Ecuador. The floor is now uh, to Piru. Gracias, señor presidente. En primer lugar, y aunque no presente hoy, queremos felicitar el trabajo de Robert Mar Marti en la conducción del grupo de trabajo, cuyas sesiones fueron dinámicas y muy productivas. De igual manera, queremos felicitar a los representantes de los países miembros que colaboraron en dicho trabajo con ideas innovadoras y siempre consensuadas. Agradecemos también el trabajo del consultor general adjunto y de la Secretaría, quienes facilitaron y coadyuvaron en la realización de este proceso de reforma. El grupo de trabajo sesionó cinco veces y se sometieron a revisión todos los documentos de gobierno en atención al mandato otorgado por la Asamblea de las Partes en 2016, la misma que atiende al aumento de la membresía la expansión de las operaciones, tanto en el aspecto temático como geográfico, y el aumento del presupuesto de la organización. El documento que se nos presenta para aprobación cuenta con el consenso del Grupo de Trabajo de Composición Abierta y tiene tres aspectos fundamentales. Actualiza los documentos de gobierno a las circunstancias actuales de la organización tras su última reforma en 2018. Brinda mayor eficiencia y transparencia a la labor de la organización con la clarificación y delimitación de las funciones de todos sus órganos rectores. Y hace más atractiva e inclusiva la participación de los miembros y de los Estados miembros y miembros potenciales de la organización, particularmente gracias a la inclusión del criterio de distribución geográfica y ampliación de los puestos en el comité permanente. Con estos comentarios... Aprobamos la propuesta de resolución relativa a la enmienda del Acuerdo de Constitución de la ITLO y sus reglamentos. Gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, uh, Piero. The floor is now to Italy. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you know that Italy has been actively engaged in the negotiation that brought to this revised text. We are convinced that the progress achieved by IADLO in the recent years had to be supported by a stronger and streamlined st statutory configuration. And we think that this mission is fully accomplished. The new structure that keeps the higher representation of country for this assembly reshapes the sharing of responsibilities in a more balanced spirit. The Standing Committee will have a higher capacity of steering the organization's work in the uh, intercessional period, stimulating a more active engagement from the membership, also thanks to its enlargement to two new rotating members. At the same time, the management power and the executive role of the Director General are reinforced. Finally, the Board of Advisors is now given an increased role for contributing to its highly valued expertise to the activities of the organization. The scene is now better set also for a deeper involvement of all the governing bodies in the process of adoption of an overarching strategy and, and, and policies. An immediate opportunity in this sense is currently being provided by the new gender policy, first discussed by the steering committee and now under a process of open consultation. With this, we, uh, we adopt the, the documents, obviously. Thank you. Thank you, Italy. And the floor is now for Pakistan. Thank you, Mr. President. At the very outset, Pakistan welcomes and congratulates the new member parties, Sweden, Mali, and Montenegro. The IDLO governance reform process was necessitated by the organization evolution over the years. The amendments to IDLO's governance documents were essential to bring the organization's governance structure in line with, the, with its current status. As members of the ad hoc standing committee and the open-ended working group on governance reforms, we were fortunate to contribute to this reform process. I must stress that the reform process was highly consultative and took into account proposals made by all members of the open-ended working group on governance reforms. 
my congratulations to the team for achieving its goal in the targeted time and in arriving at unanimously acceptable changes in the governance documents. We are confident that these changes will assist in improving the organization's outreach, making it more transparent, more geographically representative, streamlining the coordination between its governance bodies and their functions. We must complement the IDLO Secretariat, especially the Office of the General Counsel, for its hard work in implementing the changes proposed by the members. With this, we approve the proposed changes. Thank you. Thank you, Pakistan. The floor is now to the OPEC Fund for International Development, OFID. Thank you. Um, on behalf of OFID, um, I would like to thank the chair of the Open Working Group, the United States, really, for the strong leadership during this uh, reform procedure. Um, due to the good cooperation, and I would say personally the almost perfect cooperation between the representatives of various member parties, the standing committee, um, the board of advisors, and in particular the general council of IDLO, um, the outcome, I think, has been a very good compromise. And um, this type of compromise, I think, is going to help really the institution in, in the future. Um, as for OFID, we have reviewed the documents uh, which are in front of us, and the OFID is very much in favor of approving the revised uh, instruments. Of, uh, for corporate governance of IDLO. Thank you. Thank you, Ofid. Draft resolution one was endorsed at the standing committee and provides an umbrella for the approval of the amendments to the governance documents, which are set forth in the markup that accompanies the resolution. Note in that we have 27 member parties present which meet the resolution requirement for uh, Article 10. Uh, may I take it that the assembly? Yes. Jordan, please. Thank you, Mr. President. And since I'm taking the floor for the first time, allow me to thank you also for uh, leading organization and presiding over the organization for the last three years and uh, to thank the secretary to, to thank the um, uh, director general for her uh, inclusive and comprehensive presentation on this agenda item governor governance reform I would like to thank uh, each and everyone who contributed to the work of the open-ended working group uh, our appreciation in particular for the work of the Office of the General Counsel and the Secretariat, whose efforts were essential to the fulfillment of the group's tasks. Unfortunately, my country was not able to take part in the uh, open-ended uh, working group meetings. Nevertheless, we would like to make the, uh, the, uh, uh, some, some remarks. The proposed reform amendments of the government reform objectives. The proposed reform amendments to IDLO's basic documents clearly reflect the essence of the governance reform objectives that the assembly initially wanted to fulfill in order to respond to the evolution of the role and nature of IDLO since the last comprehensive reforms conducted in 2008. The proposed amendments clearly address the need to have governing bodies that are better representative of the will of the parties that are more efficient, transparent, and accountable. We note with satisfaction that the proposed amendments take into consideration the, connect, the connection between governance mechanisms and the expansion of IDLO's operations, both geographically and thematically. Its larger membership, large budget, and the need to complete its transition towards an intergovernmental organization. 
the proposed expansion of the steering committee to include more governments and balanced geographic represent representation is a vital step towards augmenting the party's role in steering the work of the organization. <coughs> the envisaged fine-tuning and streamlining of the role and mandate of the Board of Advisors should give the board's members more space to better focus on substantial themes that are in the core of IDLO's objectives and subsequently should enhance the added value of the board in this direction. Uh, so my country would like to endorse and to give a, 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 um, a blessing to the proposed amendments to, and all the reforms that are intended to, to be adopted today to the um, uh, basic documents of the organization. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, there is no further comments on this item on the agenda. May I take it that the assembly? Uh, yes. Egypt. Uh, Egypt, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Sorry, I, I didn't notice my request for the floor. Um, Egypt has participated very actively in the process in the open ended working group and would like to acknowledge the role of the United States as represented by uh, our colleague Rob Merkel in guiding this process. Uh, we believe that the proposed amendment will, will lead to better functioning of the organization, especially uh, for the clarification of the role of the standing committee, the board of advisors, as well as the director general. We expect that this process could be repeated again in the future in five years or something to, to make sure that the organization is continuing to respond to the evolving needs of developing countries. Thank you. Thank you, Egypt. <coughs> May I take it that the uh, Assembly wishes to adopt the resolution by consensus? It is so decided, and now we move to a 30-minute uh, coffee break. Then we will resume uh, our third item on the agenda of general debate. Uh, needless to remind, if any uh, members that would like to be added to the list of speakers, they can approach the secretariat. Thank you. <laughs>